Really, the reason why they're cocky is because they have no respect for who you are. You understand that? Yes, sir. You're the king of battle. You understand that? Yes, sir. Take care of your brothers. The Bullpups went 11 and 2 last season, almost reaching the state championship. People think it's just a game, but it's a lot more. It's a lot more deep than that. You know, it means something to wear red. I want to win every game. I want to go get to the state championship, make history. Let's go! It means something to beat McPherson. I grew up western Kansas, central Kansas, northeastern Kansas. I went to, went to a bunch of different uh, communities and schools growing up. And the one constant everywhere we went was uh, everyone wanted to emulate what McPherson had. You know, you, you look back at, at our wins and losses, and we were seven and three. And uh, to be honest with you, you know, there's, there's teams that you feel good about that we reached our potential, and there's, there's teams that we feel like we didn't quite fully achieve our potential. With this group, you know, uh, for various reasons, I don't feel like we, we did achieve our full potential. I've had family throughout uh, the years. I've had cousins come through the program. It, it just, it's like a, something you want to be. You want to be like those people you've fallen. You want to be that person that's making the difference in that program.
Pass by Weston Freeze. It's intercepted by McPherson, number 15, Colin Pearson. My entire family went through high school here, all were involved in many sports, and it's just a way to represent who you are and what you stand for. Most people think it's just a game, but it's a lot more, it's a lot more deep than that. Really the reason why they're cocky is because they have no respect for who you are, you understand that? Yes, sir! You're the king of battle, you understand that? Yes, sir! Take care of your brothers! Yes. Biggie, break us down! Pancake City tonight, let's get a win. Pops on three. One, two, three. Pops. I can't get in the I don't think there's any coaches across the, across the nation that uh, can say on a consistent basis every year they get exactly as far as what they thought they could. Um, that's how highly I think of these young men in our program. That's how highly I think of the, the team that we put out on the field. I love the guys. I think they're, they're tremendous athletes, tremendous football players.
One of the main controllables that, uh, that I see looking back in hindsight is always 2020. Uh, but one of the things that I look back at and, and wish we had done more of as a staff is to try and get these guys uh, more of a close-knit group and, and a family. And, and we failed them. Uh, I failed them to, uh, to, to get some team bonding activities uh, outside of the normal workday because we work. You know, uh, in the summertime, we're in the we're in the weight room, uh, we're in the gym, we're out on the field, we're working. We're still waiting on the game where we go out and execute every call at 100%. That's what we're looking for. It's week three. All right, the patience for that is getting fed. All right, get the call every snap, get your ass lined up, and play at 100% effort every snap. And the rest will take care of itself. All right, go out, get after the rest. If you're not expecting a fight right now mentally, you're wrong. Because this community will come out and smack you in the mouth if you're not ready for it. Let's get after the rest. Go. Go. Go.
playing with and for each other, not for a coach, not for their parents, not for their community in all cases, but playing for each other. And, uh, you know, you look back on it, and in a 7-3 and three year, uh, most coaches would say, I, I, I would kill for a 7-3 and three season, but that's not the standard here in McPherson. And uh, we, we all understand that. We all understand that there's a huge responsibility on our shoulders to get it done. And uh, I am very proud of our guys, but I do feel like if we would have just uh, um, taken some more strides to, to get together and, and be more close-knit, uh, things would have worked out a little bit more in our favor. It was a good season. I wish we could have gone farther, but uh, I enjoyed playing with those seniors. I'm going to miss them. Uh, we take a lot of pride in our sports and we want to win. We, I mean, basketball, you look at basketball, there's a tradition of winning and we want to do that in all our sports. Some of the highs were like the overtime win in, uh, against Winfield when they fumbled the ball and we recovered it to win. These are the games we want right here. Finally a ranked opponent, all right? They think they belong on the big stage all of a sudden because they played close with somebody worth a shit. All right, hey, it's up to us to decide that. All right, get our lined up every play tonight and play 100% effort every play and we'll walk out of here whipping that
plays more. There's more options. There's going to be offense, defense, with the field, and play on. Winfield, here's all again. It's all failed. Here's all again. It's all failed. It is failed. Defense, with the field, and play on. Alright, we're playing down there. Winfield, we got defense, we're playing. football coaches are doing across our state is, is, is preaching those attributes that are going to make you successful in life. And uh, yeah, you know, we, we get fired for not winning enough football games, but in the grander scheme of things, in the bigger picture, you know, if, if I'm developing kids the right way, then, then I can sleep at night and I can, you know, hopefully my kids will be proud of, of the job that I've done one of these days. Jayton Gum into the end zone. Thank you. 
Go Luke. their defense the Black Knights. Well, we're the kings of freaking battle! Yes, sir! We got the blood stripe on our helmets, not them! Take the molest, let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! From Crusader Stadium in Bueller, we want to welcome you to our broadcast of the McPherson High Bullpups who will be taking on the Bueller Crusaders. Steve, we've had this one circled on our calendar since the schedule was released. What excites you about this matchup? Well, it's McPherson Bueller. Anytime these two teams get together, you know it's going to be an emotionally charged, highly competitive game. seen probably in the last seven years. They are just very loaded and very skilled. Uh Six and zero oh since 2017, but there's a reason this is a rivalry. Yeah, before that, the Bueller had won six of seven. So uh, when you look at the overall series, it's 12 to nine. Very competitive series. When, when teams first started playing each other, Bueller pretty much had their way uh, with the Bullpups, but uh, McPherson has kind of turned the tables here. You know, I think it's a healthy rivalry. Um, I know our kids get jacked up for it. I know McPherson wants to beat Bueller. I think it's probably in the communities too. Maybe more important in the communities, you know, for bragging rights. And he's across the 40 and nobody's gonna stop him. He's showing off that state track speed and Bueller strikes first. As far as I'm concerned, they're still the gold standard in the West. Uh, I know that we've, we've beat them the last six games in a row now but that really doesn't matter. Um, and if we can beat Bueller again this year, uh, it's gonna mean the world to us. Um, not only in the regular season, but anytime we match up to the, with them in the postseason. So more than anything else, you know, that 2015 game kind of opened our eyes. It opened my eyes as a head coach. And, and uh, you know, we, we altered the traje trajectory of our program and, uh, you know, we figure things out. But, uh, it's, it's again, it's one of those things that it's a, it's a yearly battle and, uh, you know, we're look, looking forward to, you know, another challenge uh, with those guys down south. And it is fielded by Jayton Dukes. So he's got a good hit up the middle. He's across the 40 and he's got the kicker to beat. And he does. He's across the 30, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Jayton Dukes. How's that for an answer? There's usually something on the line, whether it be districts in the past or now that they're seeding. You know, there's always a league championship involved when it comes to McPherson Bueller. So there's there's always something on the line, and we know they're always going to be well coached. It's always going to be a physical game, and you know, it, you can throw the records and and all that out because when we match up, it's it's just always very competitive.
Jayton Gums got a good gain on first down, and he's still on his feet. Does he have a block? Still on his feet, lowers his shoulder, and he's out of bounds at about the 10-yard line. Uh, it's just a lot different being on the field and everyone up in the stands cheering. We have the best community on a Friday night in the state of Kansas, that's no doubt. And everybody's just fired up to play them because it's such a tough game every time we play them and one of the best teams that we play all season. And he kicks this one away. Good high kick. Fielded at about the 10 yard line by Brock McCurdy. Fumbled. Fumbled it. And this one appears to be in the possession of the Bullpups. It is. So now he fakes the pass and goes up the middle, and he's in for a bullpup touchdown. Oh, what a great job that time by Hoover. 25, Hoover, bullpup touchdown. I mean, just building up from Little League, just the Bueller-McPherson rivalry every Friday night, watching the older guys that you look up to make plays, and it's just something to look up to and something to really be thankful for that we have the opportunity to go and make the most out of it. I don't have any idea on the score. I just know it's two teams that are going to come together and play real, very emotional. And uh, it's probably going to be a one heck of a game where close score. I don't know if it's high scoring, low scoring. Uh, Max undefeated right now. Uh, we have one loss. We got beat by Andover Central. It's, uh, it's going to be a deal where mistakes, turnovers, and the teams that execute you know, the best are going to win. <laughs> And that'll take us to the half. Bullpups lead 24-21 over the Bueller Crusaders as we head into halftime here from Crusader Stadium. Well, anytime we're playing a good quality opponent, uh, we, we do what's called Brick Week. And uh, uh, it's, it's basically laying the foundation for our program. Um, but it's, uh, it, it also extends to rivalries or anything else we, we may have with, with an opponent that we think is, is quality. Um, if we can get that win, um, then we do put the score on the brick, uh, put the date, and leave it in the coach's office. So kids that, uh, uh, you know, kids that, that graduated in 06 can come back and check out the, the bricks that, uh, that they laid the foundation for this program. And it's, it's pretty special for kids to come back and see um, the, the, the cont contribution that they made to this program, and, uh, and our kids are still continuing that tradition today. Being up the ball for the Bull Pups, number 20, Brady Schuler. Thank <laughs> you. 
turn in hand. This is Elliott. Didn't get it. Very close. Very close. We'll see where they roll it. So the Bullpups take over on downs. Big play by the Bullpup defense. I mean, it's been tough. This is a good Bueller team. We know them personally. We've, we've played against them multiple sports year round. I mean, it's a good team. They're well coached, but I think our coaches just put us, they line us up for success. And if we execute, we should follow through and win. Albert has a man that's Blaze Hoover with the catch. And I'll tell you, Bueller has made some good adjustments at halftime, but right now, this first offense a little bit stagnant. They're not able to get. Bueller's winning the battle up front. That's, that's what's happening. We're going to take a short break and be back with this rivalry here from Bueller. Bullpups find themselves down 28-24. You know, so we have a ton of respect for Coach Warner and everything that he has done. Uh, you know, whether he was at Liberal and I was at Hayes, you know, we, we, we never beat them. Uh, he came to Bueller and, and, I, and I came shortly after to McPherson. He's, uh, he's going to get to the 300 mark as, a, as total wins as a head coach, which I can think of four or five coaches in the history of the state of Kansas that have, have tallied that mark. So I have a ton of respect for Coach Warner and everything that he brings to the game. And to, to be able to coach against him um, is an honor in itself. I, I really do mean that. The guy is uh, uh, one at every level and at every place that he has been. So uh, to be able to coach against, uh, to, to coach against him, is, it, it really is an honor. But it's going to be an emotional affair. It's going to be a knockdown drag out. A Donnybrook, as some would say. I'm sure we'll, we'll do it again. And who knows, we may see him again in the playoffs, too. You know? There's no doubt, Grant, Bueller has been the better team tonight. And we said in the pregame, you know, I felt like this was their best chance to finally beat McPherson after quite a number of games where the Bullpups have had their way. And, and they're just, right now, they're more physical. They're just more physical up front. And... You know, the expectation's always the same, whether we're playing Bueller or whoever we're playing. You know, we want to go out and execute at a high level. And, uh, and be the most physical team. So I think the expectation really doesn't change because it's Bueller. But when, you, when it gets time for game time against Bueller, it just seems like the intensity rises a little bit. Elliot 
down the sideline, has one man to beat, and he breaks Sam Becker's tackle, and he goes into the end zone for about a 52-yard touchdown. I mean, as a team, I just think it's, we, going in, we know it's going to be a fight. We know it's going to be a war. There's going to be adversity. So we just need to trust the teammates next to us and play hard and play through it every whistle to whistle and just get it done, execute. You know, that's something the Bullpups pride themselves in. They always want to be the most physical team on the field, but that's just not the case tonight. Bueller, we saw in the pregame, it just looked like their kids, they they really had that look in their eye. This is going to be their night, and it has been. You know, I was reading a lot of stuff. These Bueller kids, they said, we're tired of losing them, of course. And, you know, we've never beaten them in our varsity careers. And now they can say they have. And this should really inspire the Bullpups to get better. You know? incredibly excited, as they should be. It means something to beat McPherson. Trust me, we will get another opportunity to play those guys. Now, we win, we stay close. After a loss, we have to stay closer. All right, gentlemen, nothing stupid this weekend. Tomorrow, we get back in, we get better, we watch the film, and we prepare for next week. Yes, sir. The sun will come up tomorrow, and when it does, we're going to get better. Yes, sir. 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 All right? Guys, I'm proud of the fight. Our execution, again, it's getting us. All right? We're doing some things that we're not coached to do. We've got to get it done. And the turning point for me, if you, if you want to exactly pinpoint it, would have been halftime of uh, Bueller. Um, so we go in, we're, we're winning, we're rolling, we're running the football, we're controlling the line of scrimmage. And uh, for some reason at halftime, uh, that, that flip just kind of switched uh, against us. Um, you know, we weren't assignment sound, we were not uh, getting our one-on-ones done the way that we had been all season long. And uh, it was really hard for us to recover uh, after that you can kind of feel like, uh, you know, the air was taken out of us a little bit at that uh, second half. All right, come on, baby, let's go. And let's bounce back, bro. You look like the bad taste in our mouth. Let's go take it out on more, baby. Let's go. Five, five, three. One, two, three. Go. 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 Go.
was almost shocking because we weren't used to being down or I don't know Bueller game we were up but it's just something we're not used to and I feel like the the turning point was really I think all our players just get down on each other and we just need to like still maintain as a whole team and we can't let one loss change the whole season if you want to still get to the state championship and make history like we always wanted to is you can't let the one mid-season loss or, or an upset against us and you can't let that affect you and just keep pushing through. It doesn't, doesn't even matter if you're the worst team or the best team, every team is going to come out and fight. And that really kicked us into gear, showed that we're not the Kings. I mean, people are coming for us, that you have to respect everybody. So with Augusta, we really, really kicked it into gear, started working hard, 
showing up to practice, being all in the entire practice, no standing off to the side and talking to people, and it really showed us that we're gonna have to work for it. We're not, everybody's not gonna roll over for us. Number six, Sebastian Flower on the carry. So after the Mulvane game, it, 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 uh, it was a challenge to our manhood, so to speak, and uh, all of us, because we have an ego attached to what we do, whether we're coaches or players. Um, but the challenge was issued to our guys in that, you know, look, we, we, we played very poorly for six quarters and uh, we have a chance to turn it around against a very good Augusta football team. Um, uh, a team that uh, was picked you know, dead last in our conference and ended up being, what, third in our conference. Um, so basically we just outlined the fact that the, you know, the, the issue at hand is we gotta get a win. And the only way we're gonna do it is with a hard week of practice, and the only way we're gonna do it is together. And I really feel like, felt like our guys uh, bought into that. And, and we performed incredibly well uh, against Augusta. Touchdown, McPherson. Ball carrier number 10.
Tackle made by number 56. You know, it, it's one of those things where, you know, Saturday morning you get up and we were all excited. Our kids were excited. Um, again, you know, we, we got some competitive kids and we, we didn't, we had a bad taste in our mouth from the, from the previous game against those guys. And, and uh, so the preparation, the preparation was fantastic. It, it, again, you know, we, we, we are firing on all cylinders and, uh, um, you know, we get to that game. Um, we had some tough moments within the game that, uh, that we simply were not able to overcome. Hey, playoff football, baby. Laser focus every snap and outplay their ass every snap. It's who wants to go on the worst. Right? Whoever wants it the most will go on. Yes, Let's get after their ass tonight. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Football is, is unlike any other sport, the finality of it. You will never get to go play football again. Most of you in the senior class will never get to play football again. That's unlike any sport. Some of you that are playing college football, you may not see the field. This is an opportunity to play the best sport that has ever been invented. And have fun doing it. Now guys, all sorts of things written down to talk to you about. But the fact of the matter is this. Every time I step on the field, last Friday, when I came and watched, it made me absolutely fucking sick to see that that team beat us. There's not one person in the stands that feels that that team is better than ours. The bottom line is, two weeks ago, they played harder than we did. And we, it was evident in film. They took care of the football better than we did. It was evident in film. So the bottom line is this. It's all about how each and every one of you, how much you want to win tonight. If you have the will to win, and you fight your ass off, and do your job, and trust that the guy next to him will do his, we will come out on top. Makes me fucking sick. The great thing is we have an opportunity to do something about it. Yes, sir. You have an opportunity to do something about it on every single play. Get it done.
battled pretty hard on defense. We really, I feel like we left it all out on the field. We definitely could have, I'd say, been more consistent. Uh, we struggled with that all year. We would have, we'd say we'd lose first down, and then that would set the tone for the next couple. And then if we would win first down, then we'd think we could take a playoff. Uh, and, and that definitely showed we gave up a lot of longer drives than where they just just play after play, three, four-yard gains, just marching it down the field on us. But uh, I was really proud of the way that we didn't give up, even though there was it was within two scores and there was only a few minutes left, and we kept battling, got the ball back to our offense. Um, I would definitely say we left it all out on the field, even to that very last second. But fellas, no reason to press the panic button. Are, are, are you guys scared? I'm scared. I'm scared. All right, well, let's go play ball. Go it's that score. simple. Let's and go. stay together. Let's go All score. right. them for the second time that season I mean we lost to them once <clears throat> and we we're like okay we just overlooked them and so like we'll get them the next time 
<clears throat> but uh, I think we overlooked him again, thinking we lost to him, we can't lose to him again. And we just overestimated our abilities and underestimated their abilities. Uh, we knew they had like a, not a very good O-line, but obviously they're, they had those two studs, their quarterback and the receiver, and we underestimated them. We didn't, we didn't uh, think they were as good as they were, and that hurt us. The way things are going today in society, we need men that show up, we need men that work, we need men that, that are great husbands, um, great fathers, and we can do that through sport. We can do that through football. And um, if we make those hard decisions and discipline kids, discipline is not a negative word, but if we discipline them out of love, um, then, you know, my goodness, those kids can learn th from their mistakes that they were making while playing a game to where later on in life they're going to be incredibly successful. And at the end of the day, that's what we all want. You know, I love going to weddings or I love getting, you know, announcements that uh, some of our former players have had, you know, babies and gotten jobs and that's what we're in this business for. So we've reshifted our focus a little bit this off season. It's paid off so far, um, but we're going to have to make some tough decisions in the future. Uh, but, but the end result is, you know, we, we really do love all of our guys and we respect all of our guys because football is, you know, it, it is the hardest sport to, to strap on the pads every day and continue to grind. It's the hardest sport to get up at 5.30 in the morning in the summer while your buddies are sleeping. But you're developing those good positive habits and you're doing it while learning how to be a part of a team. And to me, there's no greater form of education than that.